Hi, my name is Jen Guile. I'm here to walk you through our fourth and final microservices March 2022 lab on improving Kubernetes uptime and resilience with a Canary deployment. In this lab, I'm going to demonstrate how to use Nginx Service Mesh to implement that Canary deployment, and it's going to include three parts. First, I'll be deploying a cluster as well as Nginx Service Mesh, so I'll go ahead and get that mini cube command out there. Uh, next, I'll deploy two apps, a front end and a back end. And then finally, I'll implement that Canary deployment using Nginx Service Mesh. So if you have been following along with our labs, you probably will notice that there's quite a bit more to this mini cube um, deployment command than our previous ones. Uh, this is required in order for Nginx Service Mesh to function. It has uh, some additional configs required for the service account token volume projection. So it looks like we are deployed. Now I'm gonna deploy Nginx Service Mesh. And if you're not familiar with Nginx Service Mesh, uh, it is our free mesh developed and maintained by F5 Nginx. And it is readily available both through Helm as well as through F5 downloads. So it looks like we're deployed. However, it can take uh, a minute or two for it to fully spin up. And so what you'll see here are a number of containers. Uh, they're all in the creating mode, or most are. Uh, in addition to the two Nginx service mesh containers in the middle here, we have uh, pods for Grafana, Jaeger, Nats, Prometheus, and Spire. So these additional pods represent some core use cases for why you would wanna um, deploy a mesh. We'll start with the security related ones, Nats and Spire. Um, a mesh is a key component in many end-to-end -end encryption strategies and organizations that are interested in implementing zero trust or are required to by law, uh, a service mesh is often a component of that. The other part of the uh, Grafana, Jaeger, and Prometheus, these are observability tools. Observability is another uh, big use case for service meshes uh, as it's going to help you get detailed information about what's happening down uh, at your service level between those services that you can't get necessarily through other tools or get easily. So we are almost completely up and running. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next challenge. Nginx Service Mesh will catch up with us. In this second challenge, I'm going to be deploying our apps. There's two. We have our front end, which you can think of as your customer facing web app. And then we have the back end that's serving the front end. And so that back end, in this case, it's back end v1, is a business logic app serving data via the Kubernetes API. So we will begin by creating the back end. And let's just take a look at the file here. We can see backend version one. So you'll see that popping up as we start to do our Canary deployment. So we'll save that and we'll apply it with kubectl apply. And our backend has been created. I'm gonna verify deployment and it's initializing right now. It should catch up in a moment. You may notice we deployed one backend, but there are two pods running here. What's that about? Well, that is because we have a service mesh deployed. And when you have a service mesh, in addition to your pod, each pod gets a sidecar. And so the sidecar is what's going to be able to uh, tell the traffic what to do and then send back information. So let's see, it's all spun up. Now we're gonna deploy the front end. So our front end deployment fairly straightforward. So it's even shorter than our back end one, but the key part here you want to keep an eye on is that it's going to be um, sending curl requests to the back end. Now notice it's not back end v1. We want to leave it uh, as generic as possible so that if the name of that backend changes, for example, to v2, it can still easily communicate. You don't have to come back in and um, update this file. So again, we'll go ahead and apply that. And we'll retrieve the pods. We know it's probably not quite up yet. 
So it's initializing both the front end pod as well as the sidecar that goes with it. There we go, we're all up and running. Now we're gonna check the logs so that we can ensure the traffic is flowing between the front end to the back end. In order to do that, oops, we need to begin with this front end logs C front end, but we can't use it by itself. We need our unique oops, front end name. So I'm gonna copy it from here and tag it on there. Now you're gonna be using this uh, multiple times throughout this lab. So saving it is saving time. So I'm just gonna call this file logs. It's not a file I'll ever be applying. I just wanna be able to get this command anytime I need it without having to rebuild it like I just did. So we'll run that and now we can see the logs and it's doing exactly what we hoped it would be doing. Backend version one is receiving all that traffic, which is as expected because it's the only backend. Now we'll go over to Jaeger to inspect our dependency. And I can tell that it's caught up with where we are because I see three under service here. So we'll see our backend V1 and our front end. We'll switch over to the system architecture tag tab. It's a little hard to see down here. So I like to use this one so we can see traffic going front end all the way to back end. So it's telling us with this one, that's where it's all going. Okay. Now we're going to add that second back end app. Why are we doing this? Well, as things happen to commonly happen, uh, new versions are created, right? And so what we're going to do is we're going to create a second version of our back end uh, app that'll be serving the front end. So we can see this is back end version two. Everything else is going to look exactly the same as our original deployment. We'll come over and we will apply this. And we see it's been created. Now I'll come over and I'll inspect the logs again. It may take a second for us to start seeing action on the back end too. Oh, there it is. I've got a two down here at the bottom. So now we can see that traffic is successfully flowing over to back end two. I'm gonna to return to Jaeger. What I should see is a chart like this that shows both. It should show the majority of the traffic still going to V1. So let's refresh. And full disclosure, this can take a few minutes and it's not quite there yet, which is okay. We can return and take a look at it later. Welcome to our third and final component of this lab, but the most exciting component, it's when we're going to implement our traffic split. Before we get to that point, a little bit on Canary deployments. What is it? Why are we doing it? If you're not familiar with a Canary deployment, also sometimes called a Canary release, uh, this is a technique, a traffic management technique to ensure that you don't um, send your traffic to an unhealthy new version of a service. Uh, it is, uh, was created, this, this saying was created based on the saying or the, the historical practice of taking a canary into a coal mine to make sure that miners didn't die if there was poisonous gas in there. In the same way, we're taking a small amount of our traffic and sending it over to that new version to make sure it's stable. And if it is, we'll move things over. Now, this first diagram is going to show how you can implement it using an ingress controller, which is not what we'll be doing in this lab but it is a very common way of implementing a Canary deployment. So in this, we see 99% of the traffic going to this V1.7 app and 1% uh, going to the V1.8. These percentages can be anything you want them to be based on your um, security and resilience requirements. Now, why are we gonna do this between services? Because as we know, our traffic is flowing from front end to backend V1 or backend V2 rather than from the ingress controller to the backend. So we need to do it down at the service level, which is made possible with a service mesh. So we can see in this example, uh, the routing from the ingress controller is sending people to both coffee and tea. But then once it gets to tea, the traffic is split between cream one and cream two. Now this is a slightly different example. It's not technically a canary deployment, but it works in the same way. Finally, before getting into the action, let's look at Nginx service mesh 
architecture, there's two key areas that you need to be paying attention here. The control plane, which is our own unique control plane that we built in order to leverage our data plane, which is Nginx Plus. Now, Nginx Plus is a commercial licensed product. However, when it's used in Nginx Service Mesh, it's completely free. It's only there as a sidecar uh, so that you can do powerful uh, use cases such as the one that I'm showcasing right now. So the control plane is communicating with the API server and various other items, Spire, NATS, and the data plane is communicating directly with our uh, pods. The data plane can then send information back up, if you follow this tall gray arrow, back up to our observ observability tools, whatever those may be. Okay, let's see it in action. I'm gonna start by defining the traffic split. Okay, very simple. We can see backend V1 is going to get 90% of the traffic. Backend V2, 10%. We'll save that. Not gonna apply it yet because we don't have the other key component here, which is the services. So I'll define the services for the split. And as we can see, we have our backend V1 and our backend V2. I'll go ahead and apply, come on, there we go. Apply the services, not the split yet. Okay, our services are there. What I'm gonna do is come back over and grab my uh, command for checking my logs. What I should see is the majority of the traffic flowing to our uh, backend V1 still, but I should see some twos in there. Uh, rather, it's uh, rather evenly applied. Now, I'm going to deploy my traffic split. And I'll run this again. And we can see, uh, if you'll remember, we had 80% going to V1 and 20% going to V2. So we see lots of ones here, not so many twos. We'll do it again, just to see them. So there's a couple two sprinkled in there, but it's that 80, 20 percentage. Before we swap over, I'm gonna refresh Jaeger and see if it's showing all of my services now. It is. So we'll come back into this chart and we can see back in V1, getting more traffic than back in V2. Okay, we'll come back over here. And I'm gonna edit my traffic split. So we were at 90-10. Uh, what we would normally advise is going slowly in increments of five or 10%, but for the sake of this lab, we're gonna be a bit severe and drop it down to 20% going to back in V1 and 80% going to back in V2. So we'll save that. And predictably what we should see is our split reversed here and it can take just a little bit for it to catch up. Oops. Oh, I didn't apply it. That would help. There we go. We can start to see the twos coming in and more twos. So that's showing that our split has been applied. And I'm gonna come in here again and I'm gonna drop it all the way down to zero going to back end V1 and 100% going to back end V2. I'll save. This time I'll apply it. There we go. And if I come back over here, I can see a row of twos. Fantastic. That's exactly what I wanted to see. Just for fun, we'll see if Jaeger has caught up. Maybe, maybe not. So we'll come into system architecture. I have to zoom back out. We can see it's working on it. It's not quite there yet, but the numbers have, have moved a little bit. So that is everything. What we've demonstrated here is uh, doing a Canary deployment with Nginx Service Mesh and then gradually rolling over until it's fully uh, swapped over from an old version to a new version. 
could be called a shadow rollout, um, could be called a blue-green deployment. And so that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you'd like to try out the lab, make sure you're registered for Microservices March. The URL is nginx.com slash MM for Microservices March. Uh, we'll also be publishing these resources so you can try it out in your own environment. So um, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.